Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Black Skull Island, and it is by Strawberry Studios, made by Luigi Ferri F Ferrini, and it is for uh, two to nine players. It takes about mm, 25 minutes or so to play, and it's for ages eight and up. In the game Black Skull Island, you're basically going to be playing as pirates. Pirates want booty, and so you're going to be collecting as much as you can, and once you get to a certain amount of booty, then you're going to all flip over your booty and add up your coins. Whoever has the most coins is the winner. In the game, you'll be taking two cards into your hand, and then you'll be separating them and placing one down along with everyone else. After everybody's chosen a card to play face down, you're going to flip them face up, and the person who has the lowest card value will go first, doing their action, followed by the next, all the way to the final card, which is going to be the highest value. After they all take place, you're going to take whatever cards you gather back into your hand. You're always going to have two, and then you're going to continue the game. Like I said, once somebody reaches that booty value, puppy booty flips, and the winner is the person with the most coins. All right, let me go ahead and show you the game. Black Skull Island down below, along with how to play it, and then my review. So here we have Black Skull Island, and we're playing three players, but you can play up to nine if you want. Everybody's got two cards in front of them. These are your specific character cards. Everybody starts with one treasure, and that's just going to be simply a one. These are going to be placed over here for coins. The rest are going to be treasure cards, specifically the ones that have treasure symbols. That should go from zero all the way to four or three, I believe, but there isn't any ones in here. So that's how you tell the difference between them, along with, of course, that symbol there. Also, depending on the number of players is how many of these cards you use, the different characters in the top right-hand corner tells you how many character players are going to be included with what type of cards. So in this specific game, we have three, which is three players. We're going to have these two, these two, these two, and then one, which is left over. We shuffle them out and deal them. Everybody also gets two of these player reference cards, which tell you what the different numbers do, uh, and of course, the different characters when you choose to play them. After you've got your uh, coins, you're going to flip them face down and they become booty. Any treasures and coins in front of you are face down secret, as well as the fact that they're also going to be called booty from now on, referencing these cards here. These cards are secret, and you only get to see these because these are your cards technically, but in the game it's pretty simple. All you're going to do is select a card, and then you're going to play it face down in the middle. Everybody's going to do that. After that, everybody's going to then flip, and you're going to go ahead and look and see the numbers down below. Uh, this is a three, this is a six and a nine. So the lowest to the highest will go. Three first. And this player is going to first draw a coin and place it here. And then choose a face up card and the owner must exchange it with a card in their hand. So perhaps they want to take this card here and then this owner uh, has to go ahead and switch it with a card in their hand. So in this case, now they have to switch this, which could or, or, or could not change the order of play. And this one actually does. So it goes to nine here. And now nine here says draw a coin and then go ahead and exchange the quartermaster with another face up card. So if you want, you can go ahead and do this. If he does that, now he's got the mate and he controls that. If the mate is the last acting character, draw a treasure, otherwise each player must pass a card from their hand to the right. And he is the last. So he gets to go ahead and draw a, car, a treasure and that can give him anything with four coins right there. Then everybody's gonna return their cards back into their hand. Now, of course you may end up with the same card, you may end up with different cards, but but nevertheless, you're going to get these two back. Then you go ahead and choose again the plan. You can choose either of your cards again, putting them face out, and then go ahead and flip them afterwards and repeat the process. This is going to be a five, then six, then seven. You're going to be doing things such as choosing players, making them switch cards, switching cards out here, drawing treasures, drawing coins, and adding them to your booty. You might even be trading your booty around. And there's a, quite a lot of different types of cards, depending on the number of players. Once somebody is able to get seven treasure cards, the game is going to end, and everybody's going to flip over their booty and add up all their points and the player with the most coins which are these here are going to win so if in this example he had one he had two and he over here had four five six this player would win the game of black skull island very simple style game just playing out cards flipping them and going from lowest to highest taking coins and booty all right let's come up and talk about it all right so let's talk about some caveats for the game the first thing is that it's seven booty cards ends the game not treasures, even though treasures and coins technically become booty once they flip face down. So once somebody has seven of these cards face down in front of them, that turn will go all the way to the end and then everybody's going to flip them over and count the coins. Now just because you have seven booty cards doesn't mean you're going to win because there are treasures that are worth nothing and if that happens maybe you're going to get less points. So maybe somebody has multiple booty cards that are worth three and four and you have seven ones or a zero and a two and you, you get the idea, right? Also there's a lot of cards in the game. I'll go over a couple of them. Like the parrot, you let you exchange a, a, a card with this one here and uh, the owner can go ahead and choose to counter by giving you a random booty. 
Uh, cabin Boy, we can take one random booty from two different players. That's not too bad, right? And deck Hands are based on if you have multiple in the field, you'll be able to draw extra cards and move cards around. The Pirate King draws a treasure, and then you can cover another face-up card with this one, and the owner draws a coin, thusly stopping them from using their action, but they still get something in exchange. And that's kind of how it works. You're just trying to gather booty and try and gather as much as you can. You're kind of trying to win the game by just simply playing cards down. It's kind of like, I guess, a trick-taking game in, in a sense, where you're just trying to gather the best opportunity, but you have to be aware of what everybody else is going to play and what they have in their hand. Now, you know mostly what is on the field and what is in people's hands, and, and you also know what is available for you in the remove from game area, which you can, of course, trade out with certain cards. And that's all well and fine, but knowing when they're going to play them and how and the order is very important as well. This is a family game, and it's very, very simple in nature. You're going to be playing cards out and flipping them, and that's it. But there's a lot of nuance and a lot of strategy in the game. The artwork is phenomenal. I really, really enjoy the artwork for this game. It's got some really cool little pictures here. I like the deckhand quite a lot. He's a big, friendly giant. The cabin boy, super cute. The parrot, all these are really great. It's a nice little pirate theme as well, and it fits well for what it's going for. It does exactly what I think it wants to do by playing cards and flipping them up and all that kind of stuff. Enjoyable. Uh, one thing I would say about the game that is, I guess, somewhat, maybe like a question I have is when you exchange cards, does that player now lose that opportunity based on the cards that are swapped? Do I want to take a card that's lower and do I get to activate it again? Probably not, I would imagine. Mostly how I played was once you swapped, if the card was higher than the last card, that would be the next card and you would actually be the owner, so you would get the action. But I'm not certain on that specific rule. Maybe a little bit more clarity in the rules will help, or maybe I missed something somehow. But either way, it was just a little bit confusing. But for the most part, it was fairly simple as to how the cards worked and how they played. And it also tells you on these wonderful little handy dandy cheat sheets how you're going to be using the cards if you need a little bit more nuance or you need to remember what players have in their hand. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. It's going to be a game that I think any family is going to enjoy playing as long as you got a, it's a quick little filler game. It does play regardless of the number of players uh, about 20 to 30 minutes because of how the rounds work. And uh, it is how I want to say this, it plays better, I think, with the more players you include in the game. It plays fine with two and three, but with seven and eight players, it includes a lot more of the characters you can use, and some of them only work with a certain amount of players, where you normally think they're bad cards, but they work really, really well. When you have a lot of players in the game, that's kind of how it gets included in there, and I like that aspect. I want to play this game with as many players as possible, because I think it's a lot more fun that way, and I like the fact that anybody can pretty much get down and play it, and I can teach you in five minutes. Overall, Black Skull Island is a fun, beautiful little game with a lot of vivid images and a really easy and interesting way of playing it. All right, well, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Is this a game you'd pick up? Is it for family? Um, and did I get anything wrong? All right, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to pirating for booty with you next time.